Okay. How can I help you, boys? You know how. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Hmm. What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Well, I know where we're gonna have to go eventually then. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. Yeah. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? He goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. <clears throat> oh, we got some stuff to go on now. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Didn't we get, uh... I get the address. He told us where the other place was. Oh. There's the squealing tires again. Someone's burnt. They were burnt out. Somewhere in the city. You know the way. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? I guess back to the rail yard. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. You boys ready? Follow me. We should keep this development with the rings under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. Got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Wasn't it already here, or did I not come here? Yeah. I don't know. I've been playing with this a few days. I don't remember. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your detail? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. All right. Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body? Yeah, Ferdinand. Are you sure you won't be upset? 
Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. Classic Carmine. Hmm. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop. Don't hit him. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I can tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. You're under mm. arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Clyde. You get this sack of shit into a cell, I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Take him downtown. All right. Let's see what we got in here. Someone was trying to get her to come home. We could go over to the lot and see what they know about her. Keystone That's going to be company. difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Halloween of 41. What does that say? Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. This is bar corner at the main. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Hmm. Let's examine. Another missing ring. It certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Uh, kind of fits the M.O. Oh my god, that is not... I already looked at that. I'm holding to the face. Oh my god. What is... It won't... Okay. You know what? Trying smells? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in... A one or two hour window is the best I can do. Hmm. Did you walk into the front of a train? No, I didn't. Okay, here we go. Call it in. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? 
I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Mm -hmm. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? To a bar. One of your favorite kinds of places. You read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. Those people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? I guess that's okay, then. Armies can't fight without food. Spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? Drink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers, what is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. Hmm. Did you know Evelyn? What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Uh huh. Did you see Evelyn last night? No, I was at home, writing. Mm hmm Do you want to get dragged into this, McCaffrey? Do you want us to get interested in you? She hung out with this powder puff, James Tiernan. They haunted the public library together. How well do you know James Tiernan? I know he works some kind of plebeian job at Rawlings Bowling Alley. Oh, you're just above everybody, Rawlings. aren't you, Grosvenor? I know that. Corner of Ninth and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. You've had a few skirmishes, huh? Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Thank you for the information, <laughs> Mr. McCaffrey. Thank you, thank you. You a friend of Evelyn Summers? Who's asking? Very cute. You know who's asking. Me. I know my rights. Who do you think's talking you to you? You don't have any. Answer the question. Evelyn mooches for drinks. I don't have any time for that. Was that so hard? Keep writing me, copper. <laughs> oh. My goodness. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. What did you make of McCaffrey? There'll come a day, and it's coming very soon. We'll run him and the rest of his pinko buddies out of Los Angeles. <laughs> 
Amanda's a suspect, Rusty. do for you. LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. Are you Levine? Making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. He is not Levine of Levine's liquor. Mmm. You got some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us taste them for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. She kept a bed here, but I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store, that was never going to work out, was it? We'll take a look around. She wasn't always such a loner. Hmm. Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. Yeah. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Well, we already talked to him. I've talked to him about the book. Saying that he didn't really know her. Hmm? Why are you loaning her books? I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Oh, bowling pin. Yeah, it says Rawlings Bowling. Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Oh, good pun. I like that. When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Oh, it's an award. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Okay. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. She talked about McCaffrey. Supposedly he fought in the International Brigade in Spain and in the miners' strikes back in Virginia. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Mm. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? 
Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Oh, we will. You're behind the wheel. Fine. Where are we headed? Let's go back to talk to Mr. McCaffrey. Eleven King. A message from Captain Donnelly. Return to Central. Go to. Eleven King. Enter out. Let's not keep the man waiting, Phelps. Captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Oh, good. That's that cop. Nope. How bad is it? Probably don't need to go in the locker room. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married. Yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers. I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address from McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. I need a drink. I got the god I'm gonna go visit him at his apartment, huh? I don't know what. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks for your help. Well, well, well. You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Now let's at least check out the bowling alley before we go there. Alright, continue to respond, okay? Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. Hello. 
lane, though, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? Ah, uh, this is business, Florence. You got a guy who works here by the name of Tiernan? Sure we do. He's a pin setter. Clears the jams, works the gutters. Go right in. He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. <laughs> He's a nice boy. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. Let's do this. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, he's running. That cherry pie. Tiernan! Uh -oh. LAPD! Now he's running. For. Get after him. We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn, Cole. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. I'm working on it. Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. If this isn't no the killer, worry. we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. Come on. That tire is basically... He's going through the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. What if they run because someone's setting them up? Because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. I don't make That's up ridiculous stories for them, detective. Leave that to the perp's imagination. Give it up, LAPD! You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? Apartment six, I remember. There's nobody to let us in. You want to do the honors, Phelps? Kabow! Oh, you got house plants? <laughs> it doesn't appear to be connected. It's a book. Everything here is going to be relevant. Hmm. How many books does this guy have? Oh, bloody stuff. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. 
Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can write him up for that. A citation, at least. Hmm. You know, when I was thinking that the psychiatrist was behind everything, I was thinking he was, like, encouraging people to do what they already felt like doing. Even if that was, like, murder or whatever, like you do with that arsonist guy. But, and I just thought someone was, like, sloppy earlier by leaving evidence at places, but, I mean... Everybody leaving the murder what weapon we and waiting a for? bloody shirt and stuff at their home. Hmm. Do you want to meddle in solving all the cases? <laughs> so you sound like. Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit you down and we'll talk. I'll go get our wheel. Oh, here we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Runner McCaffrey, stay and fight the good fight. Be careful, he looks dangerous. The guy with the sweater vest? There he is, officer. <laughs> oh, we got him now. Give it up, LAPD! Oh yeah. Whoa. McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Turn into RoboCop when I get in range. Just... We need to get downtown down. and wrap this thing up. It's gotta be McCaffrey. Unless Tyranin set him up. You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Uh, whoever did it, so it wasn't that Dahlia fuck. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan is a one, McCaffrey is in two. I want a confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to put him down one round. Ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. 
Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. You smug son of a bitch. You told us you barely knew Evelyn Summers. She hung around sometimes. I had very little to do with her. Oh yeah, what about the book? You have to do better than that, Grosvenor. We know about you and Evelyn. Evelyn was a lush and a boring one at that. You can't link her to me. We know that you thought enough of her to loan out your copy of the Metaphysics. I what? I did no such thing. That bitch stole that book from my apartment. The impudent fucking moron. And that made you angry? Angry? I was livid, looking up at me with that stupid face of hers, begging me to forgive her. Aha. Very good. That's one to you, detective. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. Hmm. You're gonna need to do better if you don't want to swing for this. I was having a political meeting in my apartment. Cheese and crackers for the fifth columnist. Some of these people will corroborate your story. I won't give up names of party members. Good. It's your funeral. It's either gonna be you or Tiernan, Grosvenor. Make it stick, detective. The party has good lawyers. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Hmm. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. You barely knew her? Sounds like half an answer to me, Tiernan. Were you sleeping with her? That's none of your business. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. You don't like McCaffrey, do you, Tiernan? He's full of the common man routine, but he props up a bar like the rest of us. Evelyn thought he was going to be a great novelist. <laughs> he had nothing but vitriol for her. Hmm. No, don't go! We both want the truth here! <laughs> you and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. You don't remember? Hmm. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and- I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it!
Don't talk about how it was between me and Evelyn. You don't know anything. Hmm. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. What are you so? I want the truth. I think you broke into McCaffrey's apartment and planted a lug wrench there. I didn't do that, and there's no way you can prove any different. As hard as this is for you to contemplate, I really loved Evelyn. She was kind and gentle to me. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. Uh, uh. Big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. Whoopsie doopsie. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, Detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thank you. Huh. Really? Is that so? You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Uh, actually, you were. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Uh, cause it's not all that's there. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. Okay, well, that just... Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. Why do they keep leaving the murder weapons in their bloodied shirt at their homes? <laughs> 